Welcome back, part two, everyone. I actually um, was trying to paint this uh, painting full through um, on just one part, but I realized that um, my camera actually, my, my video camera shuts down after a half an hour. I think the memory is, uh, it's, that's the, the most uh, for capacity. So what I'll do is I'll, this is the finished painting that we can see here. Um, it's an abstract uh, boat painting. And so basically what we did was we started off basically doing a, a quick pencil sketch with a crayon type uh, uh, drawing. Um, it's a Sharpie uh, peel off uh, China marker. And what we did is we, we drew the, the photograph that we had as a reference uh, actually from a workbook, a watercolor workbook across from me. We drew it out lightly with pencil and then we shaded in the areas so that we could use this as a guide for our tonal values. So our tonal values can range up to maybe 10 or 12 depending on your eyesight and how well you can see tonal values. But essentially in your painting you're always most times going to have a, a range of tonal values. Um, again depending on the subject matter. So here we have the darkest dark and then it slowly gets lighter and lighter as, as we go across the, the page until we have the um, white of the paper here. So this is just a quick re representation of what we're doing here which is trying to take our photograph um, that, we, that we have that we're using for reference for our painting and trying to break down where we see the darkest darks and the lightest lights and then using a quick sketch like this we can set this across on the table from us when we're painting and then we can kind of see quickly without having to do too much thinking the areas that are going to be very dark and the areas that are going to be uh, very light and then as well as some of the middle tones uh, tonal values that the, uh, you know somewhat in the middle range here so usually the easiest ones to pick out are definitely the darks and the lights we saw that the boat was the lightest and this factory or um, this uh, building in the back here, along the docks here, is very dark. So we have dark and then very light. So we sit this across from us and once we're uh, completed with the painting we have accomplished that dark darks in the background and then our for in our foreground and middle ground our boat with the light lightest lights and white of the paper here. And um, that is the uh, final uh, completed painting that we did. So in part one you did see me pretty much complete everything here as well as this background. The only thing we didn't finish was this front front portion, the foreground and the water. So what I did was I just do a quick did a quick uh, pencil sketch here of the same painting just in a smaller version. What I'll try to do is um, maybe I'll try to zoom in a little bit here and we'll just do a smaller version of the um, Okay, that should be good. So, if we were just to take this and um, kind of just go through the process really fast again, we were using mostly square brushes and um, we just basically, in the first painting we did take our uh, clean, clean water, fresh clean water, and we did a light glazing of water over the top of our watercolor paper just so that it was a little more um, uh, it just gave it a different a little more watery kind of diffused look but since we're just going to try to finish up this painting and in part two here just to kind of go through the full process so we'll just pretend that we put a light coating of water over this now our second step is we're going to go in and we're going to start mixing our colors and we use cobalt blue um, we used uh, mineral violet, which is a purple color, and a little bit of cerulean blue, and we also used some yellow ochre as well. So we sort of had a nice uh, blue sky look, and then we just started going across our painting and just pu putting in all the nice uh, blue color. And we, since we already can look over at our pencil drawing and we remember that we can go over the top of the back of the painting the the distant 
dark uh, area where there's a, a factory or a building back there. We can go over that with our blue. We can go over that area with our blue because it's going to be darker anyway, so we're going to wind up going over it with a darker color. And then here we we went right down and we did our water. So we just keep working with our cobalt blue, a little bit of our mineral violet, and a little bit of uh, yellow ochre. And we get in our uh, water. Here, this is a synthetic flat brush. Synthetic flat brushes hold less water, so you have to go back and forth to your palette more frequently. So, if you're a little new to watercolor, synthetic is a good good way to paint because it doesn't add too much water to your brush, which can, which can cause problems uh, with too much water flooding onto your paper and causing issues. So, let's say that if you're new to watercolor, brand new to watercolor, it does not hurt to use synthetic brushes. It actually helps a little bit until you get the feel for the, the uh, amount of water you're using. And here we're leaving the white of the boat. And then we're mixing a little some yellow ochre in here in different areas. So once you're once you have the main blue, uh, cobalt blue and mineral violet color in your painting, then you can you still have time for a little for a little bit you have time to add in some different uh, color just to make it a little bit more interesting, but not much time. So it's better just to do it in one wash quickly and just let it be. And then we're, we're up to our point where we left off, except we need to do this darker back area, which is the, um, the uh, factory or building in the, in the background. So let's take our, take our, uh, our blow dryer and we're just gonna quick dry this fast uh, because we're doing a video and we're trying to get things completed and sort of see the whole process from beginning to end. So here you'd probably let this dry naturally for a half an hour, 45 minutes, and then come back and continue to work. But we're going to speed up the process here a little bit. So I just dry this a little bit. And now we're going to start to work with some darks, so we can just leave our, we can actually clean up our powder a little bit, so we'll just, and then we're going to start going into some more of our darker darks, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna, sap green, a little bit of mineral violet, and we'll try to mix up a nice dark and again we let's leave it not thoroughly mixed let's not take this and just keep swirling and swirling and swirling let's leave all these different colors identifiable as we're painting so this way we have we have lots of identifiable colors here and then we can go in and we can start doing our background here. And we're just painting around our boat. And it's much more interesting if we can keep changing the making changes in the color. So 
some areas we're going to add more of a blue color, then we're going to add more of a reddish color with the uh, French ultramarine blue and then the um, burnt sienna. And this square brush comes in handy because we can actually make some really nice marks on our paper quickly. And it just works nicely with this subject matter, the way we're working right now. Alright, so now we've And then again, I change up the colors. I'm going to some cobalt blue, some cerulean blue. And then we can get creative with our uh, brush strokes. Sometimes we can add a little you know, we can spice it up and add a little nice color here and there, a little bit of that uh, lizard and crimson. And then I would add just a little more to maybe a couple other sections here. And the same thing with a little bit of yellow ochre. We can spice things up here with some yellow ochre. So it's up to you um, how creative you get with your color selection, but it's always good to add m probably more variation than less. Because if we stick with just one or two colors or three colors for the whole painting, it looks a little bit um, um, kind of uh, just a little plain. So if we can kind of keep the colors changing all the time, it tends to really lend a, a good feel for the, for the painting. And then, and then we have a uh, little bit of the gray colors over here. So I just had some... Cerulean blue and some of the previous mixture, which was all of the colors we've been using. And then a little bit of yellow ochre up top here. And I think that's really the um, captures the, the look of what we were what we were doing here to get this really nice, beautiful feel for having some really dark darks in the background um, to sort of make that that bolt really uh, pop and look really good in, in the foreground here with the water. We got lots of water here. Um, we can splash a little water here and there if we want, just to give it a little more variety. We can do that. Um, we can put in a door. So I'll take my round brush. So 
So we'll go in and I'll grab some of the um, some burnt sienna and uh, yellow ochre. And then for that door we can also go in with some straight color, maybe some uh, French ultramarine blue, sap green, and a little bit of burnt umber. And then maybe we can just mix that around a little and we can add some more color there. If you like a specific color, you can add that here and there in the painting. If, you, if that's um, something that you enjoy, you can add like a a little bit more cerulean blue, perhaps in a couple sp places. And then we can add the cerulean up here too, just to kind of tie it into the rest of the painting. That's what I would do if, if I'm going to add some cerulean blue to a couple spots in the painting then I would I would go in and maybe add some in the sky a little bit just to kind of harmonize the colors in the painting so So I hope this really uh, helps us to key in on the, um, the abstract look. So here we didn't do a tremendous amount of pencil drawing, but we did get the, the uh, idea of our layout with pencil using a photograph from a work from a watercolor workbook. And then once we did that, then we just remembered that we wanted to make a little bit of a help sheet for us so that we could really key in on where the darks are and where the lights are in the in the photograph and then we put this by our, our our table where we're painting or however we're painting we put this by us and then we refer back to that as well as the picture we're working from or the photograph and if we keep an eye on both of those things the picture that we're painting from as well as that value sketch tonal value sketch here we'll have a way better chance of, of getting this look here I don't know if this was coming out great on the camera, but so that was our tonal value uh, with pencil we did first, crayon, and then we um, did the rest, you know, from the photograph. And again, this can be any subject matter you want. This could be a a seagull, or like we said in the beginning, you can create, you can do, do a flower like this, a seagull, a house a building, a boat, whatever it is you like to paint, whatever is your favorite subject matter. You paint whatever you like and what's your favorite and you just use these same concepts and techniques to have your painting um, come out with the look of having a really nice um, good variation of darks and lights as well as um, again not getting too over overburdened maybe with drawing a lot of pencil lines to start with. We can kind of get a simple idea and just do a real simple painting and have a lot of fun with it and it's not too stressful. It's kind of a nice composition to do just for fun and or if you like to paint this way less detail with um, drawing then this is something that really can uh, benefit your artwork. Alright so again uh, glad you stopped again with part two here just to uh, finish up our ideas on um, our painting here and um, feel free to leave comments and if you like it please uh, Click the thumbs up button and uh, leave comments as always if you have any questions or you're, um, uh, you just want to leave a comment to say hello or whatever. Love to hear from you and we'll talk to you soon and see you on the next video. Bye-bye.